Hey, welcome to the video. <clears throat> um, we are doing some indifference identities now, and so uh, your objective today is that you should be able to use the sum indifference identities to compute non-special angles using the unit circle and verifying identities. So we got a, a couple new things here, um, but for the most part, we're doing the same things that we've done previously in 7.1 and 7.2. If you watch those videos, we were dealing with simplifying and verifying using the eight basic identities. Now we're going on and using sum and difference identities. So sum identities means that you're going to take the sum of two angles and use a, an identity that goes with that. And then you're also going to use the difference of two angles. So we'll see what that looks like in just a second. So let's go to the slide that I just skipped. Um, take a second now and write these down in your notes. Sine of A plus B is equal to sine A cosine B plus or minus sine B cosine A. And I want you to notice here that for cosine, I have plus or minus, and then over here I have minus plus. What do you think that means? Yeah, that means that if this is plus, then this is minus. See, on the sine, it goes plus, plus, minus, minus. Cosine goes plus, minus, minus, plus. So they're opposite signs when you're doing that. We'll see that in our example. And the tangent. Now, I'm only going to do examples with sine and cosine. The same idea applies when you're doing the tangent. But, you know, uh, we really don't use tangent all that much because, you know, you can just, you know, put this over this over this and then, you know, deal with that. And it works the same way, right? Sine over cosine. So, um, <clears throat> you know, this is a simplified version. If we had done sine over cosine and done this proof, we'd get that. But, you know, uh, I don't really think it's too much of memorizing this. It's really using the sine and cosine that's gonna you're gonna see most often. So let's take a look at some examples. So example one, and notice I have them here on the side. So uh, we're gonna evaluate cosine of 15 degrees. Now I want you to know that cosine of 15 degrees. Now that's not in the unit circle. I want the exact value, not a calculator, you know, approximation. I want the exact value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find two angles in the unit circle. When I add them or subtract them, I get 15 degrees. Well cosine of 15 degrees would be the same thing as cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Now there's plenty of angles that I could subtract to get 15 degrees. Uh, but these are the two that, that are easiest to work with in the first quadrant. So let me, let me draw a quick, a quick unit circle here. See what we're doing, all right? We got 45 degrees which is right in this middle here and we know that those coordinates are root two over two, and root two over two. And then we got this one here, which is uh, root three over two and one half. So we're going to do the difference formula. We're gonna use this one right here to solve for this. So we're just gonna convert it. So notice it says cosine of A, cosine of B. In this case, 45 is A, 30 is B. So we're gonna have cosine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees plus, remember this is minus, so this is plus, okay, this is minus, so it's, this is minus, so this is plus, again, okay, opposites, sine of 45 degrees, cosine, oh, blah, 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 sine of 30 degrees, okay, so it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine, all right, if you're going to memorize these, it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine, that's cosine, and then sine goes sine, cosine, sine, cosine, all right, so cosine of 45 degrees, we look over here, cosine of 45 degrees is the x-coordinate, so it's square root of two over two. And cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees right here, it's the x-coordinate, it's square root of three over two. Plus sine of 45 degrees is root two over two. And sine of 30 degrees is one half. You sound like an auctioneer, right? Root two over two over two over two over three over two over this, we get, okay, so we multiply this, sorry about that joke. It's square root of two times square root of three is square root of six over four plus square root of two over four and we add those together now we can't really add root six plus root two we just got to put it like this can't put it under one square root okay that's bad algebra illegal algebra so there we go that's our answer square root of six plus root two over four let's take a look at another example of where we would use the sum or difference identity so we're going to determine sine x minus y given this, so let's already, let's convert this, shall we? We shall. Sine of x 
cosine of y minus sine of y cosine of x and I get this from here okay and it's just x and y's instead of a's and b's okay so I just put it right here um, now I have cosine x so that's good I'll put that right I'll put that right here it's three-fifths and I have cosine of y that's good that's four-fifths but I need sine of x and I need sine of y so we're gonna make some little triangles here let's make a right triangle and remember, in this case, x and y are angles. So let's make this x. I know that cosine is 3 fifths. That means the adjacent over the hypotenuse, 3 over 5. That means this side. This is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. That means my sine of this angle is the opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 fifths. So sine of x is 4 fifths. I'll put that there, 4 fifths, minus over here. Um, this is y, y the adjacent over hypotenuse, the other side is 3, the sine of y in this case is 3 fifths, so I'll put that over here, we got 3 fifths now, so now we're going to multiply these together, I got 16 20 fifths minus 9 20 fifths, and everybody knows, everybody knows, 16 minus 9 is 7 over 25, and that's our answer exact answer for sine of x minus y. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, example number three. Uh, cosine of pi over two plus x equals, oh, you know what, I got, a, I got a nifty demonstration here. This is actually interesting that this is really a phase shift, right? If I phase shift cosine of x pi over two units, it should look like negative sine of x. Well, let's take a look at that. Shall we? We shall, because I'm doing a video, so let's take a look. So over here, notice I have cosine of pi over two plus x, I've graphed it. And yes, in fact, it is negative sine. And just in case we really wanna know, let's run split, let's, let's do it here. Negative sine of x, oh, they match, look at that. Okay, so we see that they're the same. Let's go back to my slideshow here. Okay, so let's go and prove this. We're gonna verify this. Remember, we're gonna start with this side and on that side. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this in. This is like A and B. So I'm going to plug these into my formula right here for the sum, the cosine sum formula. So I'm going to have uh, cosine of pi over 2 times the cosine of x minus sine of pi over 2 times the sine of x. Okay, that's what this is. All right, now we're going to go to the unit circle. And if you go to the unit circle, cosine of pi over 2. All right, let's draw it over here so you can't remember the unit circle. This is pi over two. Then we've got up zero, or over zero, up one. Zero, one is our coordinate. So cosine of pi over two is zero times cosine x minus sine of pi over two is one times sine over x. And lo and behold, we get negative sine of x. Q E D quad era to demonstratum. We are done. All right, folks, that's it. Those are my three examples. Here are my three practice problems. Try them. They look just like the ones I just did. So try these practice problems. I really, really encourage you to try them. So that way you can get some practice. Check the WISC link for the solutions to those practice. Thanks again for joining me. Good night.